A big thank you to MPB for sponsoring this week's video. Uh, hello everybody, how's it going? And welcome to a new location for me and my videos today. I can't believe that I've not been here before because this street is a long way up my street. These are called the Anglesey Barracks, I believe, and they were built in about 1870. And uh, it's where the miners used to stay when it was too far to go home after a day's work. And I imagine they were in slightly better condition in the 1800s, but probably not much better. But uh, photographically, at least, I think, they, uh, I think they look fantastic. Just me today, no Noah, I'm afraid. Uh, so please don't turn off. As much as I appreciate all the positive comments in the last video about my assistant Noah, I am a bit worried that any video that he doesn't feature in from now on will get like just no views. So yes, please stay. Also actually, uh, today I want to talk about my gear again. Uh, you might remember a few weeks back I mentioned that I've now settled on uh, a load of gear that I'm going to use for the foreseeable future. Uh, so I'm going to talk about that today. If you're new to this channel, I've spent the last 18 months, two years, testing loads of different equipment, hoping to find a camera that's uh, fun to use and a setup that's fun to use. And I'm going to talk about the, uh, the stuff that I've settled on today, which is not perfect, but I think, you know, I'll get onto that. But first, let's try and take some photos of these, these amazing cottages. <laughs> So I'm, uh, I'm not an expert on, um, well, anything, to be honest, but certainly not trying to work out when autumn colours are going to be at their best. Changes by a couple of weeks every year, seemingly, and I guess it's based on things like the summer conditions. Uh, we had a very warm early summer and a very wet late summer, and I don't know what that's going to do to the colours, but it looks like it's going to be a little bit earlier than last year. That could be completely wrong, but uh, that is my uneducated guess. Well, it turns out, as expected to be honest, that it's quite a, quite a tricky place to shoot. What I'm trying to do is uh, emphasize how much nature has taken over, but at the same time find compositions that include the mountains in the background, because that's what makes this place so, um, well, it feels so raw, I think, and the old battered buildings. But yeah, the landscape beyond here is just as, um, just as impressive. Dan, I mean, I'm talking about this place being hard to photograph. I'm sure it was harder to live here. There's a plant just coming out the top of this chimney, which I sort of feel like is the epitome of uh, nature taking over. Well, that is very human nature. I love it. Uh, right, let's talk gear, shall we? Um, this is the camera and lens setup that I anticipate using most of the time uh, going forward. So this is the Sony a7R Mark V, uh, a camera that I've spoken about not loving multiple times already, even though I've only had it for a couple of months, uh, but I'm starting to like it. And the reason I'm starting to like it and the reason that I don't love it are exactly the same and it all comes down to competence basically. This camera is incredibly competent and as a consequence it has no quirks, no weaknesses and therefore seemingly no personality. And I don't really like that when a camera has just nothing about it that's wrong or weak or strange or funky. Uh, it's just really really good. So um, yeah I appreciate that's a bit of a strange thing to say but I'm as I say, starting to like it. Uh, and the lens on this camera is a 40 millimeter f2.5 uh, G lens from Sony. And I absolutely love this focal length as I've spoken about multiple times before. Uh, I love how natural it looks. And every time I take photos at this focal length or I see photos taken by other people at this focal length, I'm drawn to them more than I would be photos taken at 400 or 600 millimeters or 12 or 14 millimeters because uh, the scene looks exactly like how I would see it with my eyes and I absolutely love that. So I'm gonna strive in future, as I have in the past, to take most of my photos at this focal length. Uh, I've had a checkered history with this lens. Uh, I've bought it, sold it, bought it, sold it, bought it, sold it, tried the 50 mil version, tried the 40 mil again, 
bought it. Then the reason I kept selling it is that the maximum aperture, as I said, is f2.5. That's very similar to the 24 to 70 I've had, uh, and therefore I've thought to myself, is there any point having two? I've decided multiple times not. I've now decided there is a point because I can hang this around my neck all day long and not notice it. And also, I just absolutely love using small primes. It used to be the case that if you wanted a prime, then you could either choose a pro prime that was massive, optically fantastic, very, very bright, very, very expensive, or you'd have to settle for something a lot more plasticky, optically inferior, not really very good. Now though, lenses like this are coming out, which are fantastic optically, just not as bright as other lenses, and therefore much, much smaller. And they're built brilliantly. This one is all metal, and I absolutely love it. So this is gonna be my main lens. Now, of course, there will be some times where I don't wanna shoot at 40 millimeters, uh, and I don't wanna miss out on not shooting something just because I don't have another lens, uh, particularly when that other lens is tiny. So this, again, is uh, an all metal, but very small lens from Sigma. This is a 90 mil f2.8, and I think it's fantastic. So uh, yeah, in much the same vein as the 40, this lens I'm very excited about using more. Uh, I used it for the first time in Switzerland last week on a campaign shoot, thought it was great. So uh, excited to use this more. Uh, and then the third and final lens that's gonna be part of my kit, I don't actually have yet. I ordered it from MPB yesterday. Uh, it's a 24 millimeter F1.4, which is a much bigger lens than either of these two, but I decided to go with the F1.4 because it's also gonna be my main video lens. That more often than not, will sit on the Sony a7 that's recording this now, but sometimes, if I don't want to take two cameras out with me, it will uh, just sit in my bag with the 40 mil on the camera most of the time, unless I need something wider or want to shoot video. And that's the kit. That's what I'm going to be using going forward. Uh, and as you'll know, if you've watched this channel for a while, I've tried Leicas, Fujis, Ricos, and probably lots of other stuff over the past couple of years. And if I didn't shoot video, chances are I would probably still be using one of those setups. But because I do shoot video, this I reckon is the best setup for me, particularly because it all fits in a tiny little bag, which is kind of difficult to do if you're shooting video and stills in the mountains. So uh, it's taken a long time to get here, but I'm now satisfied with my kit. And I think that shooting with the small primes actually makes the, um, the Sony slash Leica a7R4 much more fun to shoot with. Still not as much fun as a Leica, an actual Leica, or a Fuji, but uh, a bit closer, at least. Uh, also notable omission, the, uh, the 24-70 GM Mark II f2.8 Sony lens, I've definitely butchered that name. Uh, I still have that, still love that. It's the most impressive lens I've ever used because it's, as far as I can tell, as sharp as any G Master Prime from Sony. Uh, and it's incredibly light too, for what it is. It's still just too heavy to have around my neck all day long. And also, I just prefer shooting primes. I mean, there'll be plenty of times when I use that 24 to 70, if the weather's not good and I don't want to be changing lenses, or if I'm shooting a really dynamic scene and I'm constantly changing focal lengths, I'll be using that lens. But for the most part, I much prefer using primes uh, and I've accepted that now. So here we are, my setup for the foreseeable future. And I know that none of you believe me. I honestly can't believe I've not been here before. Really is my kind of place. Although that at the moment, as you can probably tell, needs some light. There are doorways and windows that you can't really see because the light's so flat, whereas if there was some harsh light, you would get the shapes and textures a lot more. And perhaps if there was light, depending on where it was, you'd get some separation between the building and all the slate on the mountain behind it. One to visit in slightly different conditions, I think. Oh, feels like January. kind of just uh, playing with the outline of the mountain there. No photographic gold mine yet. Lots of slate, obviously lots of slate, but uh, no, nothing to, to hit the portfolio yet, I don't think. I shall come back another time. Check again. Eighth. There are seven deliveries before my 24 millimeter gets to me. I don't know what you're like on uh, photography kit delivery days, but <clears throat> this is what I'm like. 
I'll check again in 10 seconds. Uh, also, huge thank you to MPB for their continued support of this channel and for sponsoring this video. They are the place that I go to when I want to add to my kit. And I've saved myself a fortune over the years by buying used. And for most pieces of digital photography or videography kit that you can think of, I reckon they've got some stock. And in many cases, that stock will range from basically like new to stuff that's well used and therefore quite a lot cheaper. And regardless of what you choose, everything comes with a six month warranty. So yeah, if you're looking to add to your kit, definitely check out MPB. And also I think it's the best place to sell your kit too. And I think sometimes you can make the argument that you might make a bit more money if you sold on like an auction site or something. But I always think by the time you've dealt with the fees, the feedback anxiety, the shipping, and all the questions that come with a private sale, I often don't feel like I've saved anything by going down that route. Now with MPB, they will arrange for a courier to come and get your kit. And then once it reaches them, they'll do an assessment. And after they've done that assessment, they'll pay you really quickly. It's a fantastic service and I can't recommend it enough. So whether you're looking to add to your kit or take away from it, check out MPB. And again, a huge thank you to them for their continued support of this channel. It's so cool to have sponsors that I actually use and love. So uh, yeah, big thanks to them. And I'll see you next week. When tell you the truth, I, I actually won't be using the kit that I've um, I've just shown you, for reasons that will become clear. I'll see you then.